Well, starting in January, Democrats will once again have control of the House of Representatives after eight years. There's a lot of things they could do with that new power. They might even collaborate with the president on a few things, fighting the heroin epidemic, for example, or repairing our crumbling infrastructure. But for incoming Intel Committee Chairman Adam Schiff, there is another priority, helping powerful tech companies, to which he is totally beholden. President Trump has been pressuring the Postal Service to hike rates on Amazon, which he says is getting unfairly low rates and shafting taxpayers. Schiff is outraged, though, that anyone might complain about this, might complain that the world's richest man is exploiting the United States and ripping off taxpayers on postal rates. In fact, he thinks that, that criticism is likely a crime worthy of an investigation. That's not, that's not the only crime that Schiff sees. He also wants to investigate the Trump administration's opposition to AT&T's $85 billion takeover of Time Warner because CNN is owned by Time Warner. That's what the left-wing resistance is becoming, a platform for protecting the world's most powerful corporations. In fact, that's what it's always been. Well, defending powerful tech monopolies may be a top Democratic concern, but it's not their only one. Democrats say they're preparing a subpoena cannon that will target nearly 100 different Trump-related targets, from his tax returns to Jared Kushner to the implementation of the travel ban, the proposed ban on transgenders in the military, etc., what are voters going to think of that? Julian Epstein is former chief counsel of Democrats in the House Judiciary Committee. He joins us tonight. Um, so, Julian, thanks a lot for coming on. I think we both agree that the Congress does have a constitutional responsibility of oversight. I think we probably also agree that Republicans have done a lot of foolish nonsense like this, too, over the years. Conceded. They also just lost the House. We agree. Ah, right. So, yeah, we but my agree question, on three things. <laughs> yeah, so, so my question is, though, does investigating the president's meeting with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki last summer. Is that going to lower health insurance rates at all, do you think? Well, we also agree that I think Democrats should look to work with Republicans on a whole host of things. I think in particular, last time I was on the show, we agreed that both political parties for the last couple of decades have ignored the middle class. I mean, the middle yeah. class has had an economic recession since about 1975, and neither party has really put forward a meaningful agenda to, ad to address the middle class and the working class. So I completely agree with you on that, and I completely agree that both parties have been, are guilty of not doing that. As far as investigations, I think we've learned something from the many investigations over the last 20, 25 years. Benghazi and Fast and Furious and the investigations Democrats did into Iraq when the Democrats were in control from 2006 to 2010. And that is in order for an investigation to be successful, it's got to be bipartisan. Um, you've got to work with the other side and you've got to make a, a compelling case, not just to the other party, but to the American public, that you're not trying to score political points. What you're doing is the people's business, the constitutional duty, as you allude right. to it, I agree. to do meaningful oversight to make sure people are playing by the rules. Um, and, you know, as far as a subpoena canon, you know, I've, I, on the two committees that I was a staff director of the Government Oversight Committee and then uh, Chief Counsel of the Judiciary, you know, we got into a lot of subpoena fights. The one thing that I think a lot of people on the left don't realize, and I think you know, Jerry Nadler and some of the others are, are proper in, in chastening people on the left a little bit, is that subpoenas are exceedingly difficult to enforce. You remember Fast and Furious in 2011 and 2012? Very well. There was a subpoena, there was a subpoena for the J Justice Department documents. There was a fight back and forth. That went on for about three years before House Republicans finally gave up on it. It's incredibly difficult. The courts insist that the two branches, the legislative branch and the executive branch, exhaust all the options before they go to the courts to try and enforce a subpoena. Even then, you can have endless appeals. And people, the executive branch can run the clock. And that's all the more important that if I think if, if the Democratic investigations are going to be effective, they are, one, going to have to appeal to the sense of kind of civic duty on the part of Republicans to play a meaningful role and make the case to the public that this is not about scoring points about uh, against Trump. This is not about trying to win the election in 2020. This is about meaningful and important oversight no, it's, it's that there a should totally be bipartisan fair agreement on. If they can do that, I'll, I'll be impressed. Julian Epstein, thank you. As well, always, I, I, I certainly am urging them to do that. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I hope, I hope they listen. They never will, but I hope they do. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Well, the